Have you ever felt so overwhelmed by the simplest tasks that you just stop? You're not alone. That's the freeze response. Our body's circuit breaker for stress and it doesn't only snap just during major crises. It's not about the actual danger, it's the overwhelming demand which suddenly feels like too much and our brain hits the pause button. But first we need to chat about the inner workings of our brain when we face stress. It's not just an emotional response, it's a whole brain event. Now at the heart of the event is the amygdala, a tiny almond-shaped area of the brain that acts like the command center for your stress response. It's like the most sophisticated security system, constantly monitoring for any signs of threat and being ready to activate the alarm the moment it senses danger. When the alarm sounds, it starts what we commonly call the fight, flight, or freeze response. Each of these responses is like a, a different path our brain can take us down when it perceives a threat. Now fight gears us up to tackle the issue head on, whereas flight encourages us to get out of there like very fast. And freeze, well, freeze is like hitting the pause button hoping the threat goes unnoticed if we are like still, like a statue. But why do we freeze? Now, we freeze when fighting won't help us or it could possibly cause us more harm and fleeing and getting away isn't available. So we do the only thing we can, we freeze. And sometimes people call this playing possum or playing dead. We do this to try and lessen our pain. We try to blend into our environment, to become invisible in the face of fear. It's an old survival trick that can be super helpful unless it's your default response to every stressor. Now a client I saw in my private practice described their freeze response. And Lisa came into therapy saying, it's like every part of my life demands something from me. I'm behind on my rent and every late notice from my landlord feels like I'm failing. Then my car broke down. That was the last straw. I just came home, threw my keys on the table and sat down. I couldn't move. It wasn't just about picking up the phone to call the mechanic. It was like the weight of everything was on my shoulders and it pinned me to the couch. I wasn't just avoiding the call. I was avoiding like everything. My financial problems, the car, wondering how I would get to work and how I would pay for any of it. I just sat there staring at nothing for hours in what seemed like days. It felt like I was in this thick fog and every logical thought was gone. I knew I needed to act to do something, but I just couldn't. That's what the freeze response to stress is like. It's when you're so swamped by the stress and the danger that your brain hits the emergency stop button. And whether it's facing a real threat or just the mountain of stress from juggling too many tasks, your amygdala, the bodyguard of the brain decides it's time for a complete shutdown. Now in these moments, the idea of stillness of becoming motionless surfaces as the safest choice. But let's get something clear. These aren't deliberate and conscious choices we're talking about. The fight, flight, freeze reflexes are automatic, bypassing the part of our brain that deals with conscious thought called the frontal lobe. It's not like the choices you're making right now, which involve things like clicking on this video, tuning in to listen, and deciding what you want to eat. That's your frontal lobe at work, engaging in a, a thoughtful decision-making process. But when the freeze response takes over, it's an entirely different ball game. Now the reality is every single one of us has a limit or what we like to call the tipping point and it's like alarms go off in your head. It's, you know, like, it's like you see this amygdala doesn't know if it's just your overwhelming to-do list or you're being chased by a bear. So it's not really understanding what is this threat. To your brain, stress is stress and too much of it. It feels like you're fighting for your life. You're experiencing what I like to call a primal pause. Think of it as your brain's way of throwing up a stop sign during a a mental traffic jam. Your amygdala becomes a resource hog when it thinks it detects a danger and starts pulling a bunch of resources away from other parts of your brain, namely the frontal lobe. In other words, your frontal lobe becomes 
less active. And remember, your brain's frontal lobe works kind of like much like a CEO. It keeps your emotions in check so you can feel without overreacting. It's what stops you from walking out of a boring work meeting or even a class, even when you're screaming inside of yourself to just get up and go. It's also your social compass, picking up on sarcasm and body language. Plus, it's your planning guru that maps out your life's next big move. So when it's dulled down physically, it's there, but functionally, it's not. And the next important step is to understand what you can do about it. Now, someone experiencing the freeze might be spending hours motionless on the couch or lying in bed, not feeling up for talking, eating, or even being around people. The frontal lobe is in charge of planning, deciding, and acting. So when in freeze mode, it's as if the frontal lobe is on a break. It's tough to find the motivation or to engage in much activity. But understand, it's not giving up on life. It's just a complete overwhelm from stress. So let's go through some of those strategies at work when the freeze mode kicks in. Now the first one I like to call structured disengagement. And this one kind of very much flies under the radar. This isn't about avoidance. It's about taking a strategic retreat. So what it involves is setting a timer for five to 10 minutes and stepping away from everything. Do something completely different that absorbs you, like a simple puzzle, a game, or a physical task like organizing a drawer in that cabinet that has just been sitting there messy for so long. This brief step away isn't running away from the problem. It's more like stepping back to see the whole picture. And when the timer goes off, you'll return to your stresses with a fresh set of eyes. Often this brief disengagement can reset your stress threshold and reduce the feeling of being overwhelmed, making it easier to take the much needed action. The next one is called sensory engagement by actively involving all of your senses. So your touch, your taste, the sight, the hearing, and also the smell to transform your mental state. So for example, you could discover a potent aroma such as peppermint or citrus and allow yourself a moment to deeply inhale and savor it. Consume a delicacy, a snack, something that's really special, or slowly drink a beverage immersing yourself in the flavors and the sensations. You're aiming to deliver a sensory jolt to your system, an olfactory slap, if you will, to shock you back to the immediacy of the now. Now consider the refreshing jolt that comes from a cold shower. This simple yet effective technique can quickly invigorate your senses, providing an immediate mental boost and helping to steer your focus away from the stress. Another technique or strategy that I think is really useful is what's called cognitive shifting. Now this isn't just about changing what you're thinking about, it's about changing how you think. So it's about starting by acknowledging your stress and trying to do this without judgment. Then deliberately shift your thinking to one thing you can control. So in, instead of fixing on the what ifs, focus on the what nows. So if you're stressed about a future event, switch your focus to preparing for it. Now this mental shift can unfreeze your mind by moving you from a place of worry to a place of action. The mental shift redirects your energy from anxiety to preparation, unfreezing your mind and moving you toward productive action. Another really, I think, useful and, and somewhat powerful strategy is prioritizing your actions. So I want you to look at your mountain of tasks and ask, what's the one small thing that if done makes everything a little bit easier? That's your target, break it down. It can be as small as you like. So give yourself credit for that step. It's like planting a flag on a mountain you struggle to climb. So pause, take a breath, and really savor that accomplishment. It may seem small, but it's, it's the start of, of something bigger. Now another useful strategy is engaging in physical movement. Facing stress can often feel like you're navigating a maze without an exit. This isn't just about changing what you're thinking about. 
It's about also changing how you act. For instance, consider Sarah, who was anxious about an upcoming move to a new city. She was like fixated on everything that could go wrong by recognizing her stress and then focusing on what she could control, such as organizing her belongings and creating a to-do list for the move, Sarah was able to shift her mindset. Just feeling a sense of accomplishment by using these strategies triggers a response in your amygdala, signaling that the threat level may not be as high as it seems. It's like your brain's security system is beginning to understand that the day's stress is not the same as a life-threatening scenario. If you were in real danger, say from a predator in the wild, your body wouldn't be pumping out dopamine because survival, not pleasure, is the priority. But when you start to feel good, even just a little bit, and even when stressed, it confuses the amygdala a bit. It's an unexpected signal that the situation isn't as critical as it first appeared. This tip-off prompts your brain to reevaluate, redirect, and focus back to the frontal lobe, the area in charge of making plans and decisions. And that's crucial because your frontal lobes will help you shift out of the freeze response by allowing you to organize your thoughts and actions to tackle the stress head on. But I think we'll just kind of leave things there. Let me know in the comments how it pans out for you. And if it doesn't do the trick, we're not giving up. I'll come back with another video, another strategy, and we'll keep it going until we see some breakthroughs.